Hey folks, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, my name's Ryan from Tragedy Tales, and over here we cover anything tragic. Whether that be a plane crash or a bizarre, unusual accident, we cover it all. But this week, yet again, I've scoured the net for five spine-chilling clips that will leave you grateful to be alive. I show these clips so that we can learn and hopefully avoid a similar tragic fate ourselves. So strap yourselves in, here are five more pieces of footage captured before horror. This heart-stopping GoPro footage was captured in April of 2022 on the majestic Meiji Mountain, located near La Grave in the Southern Alps. The video is pretty short, but very intense. It starts with serene scenes, presenting a beautiful panoramic view of the magnificent mountains. He finds himself captivated by the beautiful picturesque scenery. However, while he's admiring it all, an unforeseen event takes place. A sudden hole materializes underneath him. In an instant, the skier helplessly descended into the depths of the dark void. Remarkably composed, the Frenchman utilizes his skis to slow his fall, gracefully maneuvering down the near vertical slope as though he was defying gravity. Now, footage before horror doesn't necessarily mean death. Amazingly, against all odds, his audacious strategy to slow his fall succeeded, allowing him to find a small foothold on a narrow ledge. From here, he peered into the deep, dark chasm that almost claimed his life. Fortunately, his ski companions were well prepared for these sort of things. It took the group approximately 15 to 20 minutes to make their way to the crevice in which he'd fallen. When they got there, the painstaking rescue efforts commenced, involving the use of crampons, pickaxes, and shovels to finally free him from the icy grip of the glacier. Thankfully, the unnamed skier, described as an experienced mountaineer and ski mountaineer, not only survived the ordeal, but also exhibited astonishing composure. Following a brief respite, he even resumed skiing leaving his companions in awe of his calm demeanor. This footage went viral and left countless online viewers speechless. This eerie, chilling footage that was captured on the 4th of December 2021 unveils a heart-wrenching tale that unfolded in the city of Mwingi, a small town nestled in Kenya, approximately 200 kilometers east of the capital city, Nairobi. Now on that fateful day, what was meant to be a joyous occasion quickly descended into a horrifying tragedy. A 51-seater bus filled with 45 passengers brimming with excitement for a wedding ceremony embarked on a treacherous journey. Their destination lay in a distant village, nestled on the other side of the famous Enzui River. Among the passengers were members of the close-knit Mwingi Catholic Church. With the church choir on board, their voices filled the air with laughter and cheerful conversations as they boarded the St. Joseph Ceremony Bus. Approaching the road that spanned the Enzui River, the once tranquil waters had transformed into a raging current completely devouring the road that they were supposed to cross. Of course, he stopped the bus and contemplated the risks of traversing the river. While he did this, members of the wedding party, along with the church choir, defiantly danced and sang by the water's edge. Their spirits remained unyielding, determined to not let a mere river dampen their special day. Their faces radiated joy, completely unaware that within the hour, most, if not all of them, would be dead. The bus driver was acutely aware of the dangers that lay ahead. He even expressed the fact that he was unfamiliar with both the bus and the river, 
However, according to survivors' accounts, various members complained that they were already late and urged him to forge ahead. Motivated by this pressure and apparently fearing the appearance of being a coward, the bus driver made a fatal decision, disregarding the swirling floodwaters that served as a chilling warning from nature itself. He pushed forward, hoping to navigate the treacherous crossing. However, in a cruel twist of fate, tragedy struck with brutal force. This video footage captures the bus as it inches forward through the water. And they almost make it until the vehicle's tires suddenly lose their grip on the slick road, sending the bus tumbling over itself. The passengers, disoriented and petrified, inadvertently trampled on one another trying to escape. By the end of that fateful day, that river took a heavy toll, mercilessly snatching away 33 lives, leaving 12 in complete shock. Among the dead were the ill-fated bus driver who said that he should not continue along with the daughter of the bridegroom and tragically her three young children. Regrettably, this is not the first time that lives have been lost on this river on this exact same road, raising unsettling questions as to why a bridge had not been constructed to safeguard the lives of those who must cross. This tragedy serves as a grim reminder of the complete unpredictability and the ruthlessness of nature. Skydiving is an inherently frightening and high-risk sport that involves leaping out of a plane with just a parachute between you and certain death. Personally, I'd never attempt it, but loads of people, thousands of people love it. However, if I were to try skydiving, I'd definitely opt for a tandem jump where you're basically hooked up to a professional and it's considered way safer for beginners. Unfortunately, this belief proved fatal for 18-year-old Tyler Turner. On the sunny morning of August the 6th, 2016, Tyler, who bravely refused to let his mild case of cerebral palsy control his life, arrived at the Lodi Parachuting Center in California for his first ever tandem skydive. Tyler was known for his fun-loving and adventurous nature. He was a musician and was adored by everyone around him. For a bit of background, the Lodi Parachuting Center was a renowned skydiving school located in California's Central Valley. It opened in 1964 and it proudly claims to be one of the largest and oldest drop zones in the United States. On that fatal afternoon, Tyler was paired with Yong Kwon, a 25-year-old instructor who had accumulated 700 jumps of experience. Before suiting up, Yong turned his camera and warmly greeted Tyler capturing the excitement of the moment. Tyler, standing on the sunlit runway, expressed his love for his mum and playfully wondered if he would make it through the jump. Welcome to Parachute Center. Oh, what yeah. is your name? My name is Tyler Turner. What are you doing here? I am going to jump out of a plane. <laughs> it's your first time. First time indeed. Uh, maybe you're a little bit scary? A little bit scary. I'm. When I get up there, it's going to be like, oh gosh, adrenaline's going to kick in. Just going to just let it happen. Okay. Who is it? That's my mom over there. Ah, hello. Very loving mom. Oh. Done a lot for me in my life. Hope more that she'll help me with more of my life. Because I want to make it. <laughs> okay. We're going to make it. Do you ready? I am ready. High five. Let's go to jump. Let's go jump. Okay. I'm ready. And just like that, they said goodbye. Tyler boarded the plane and ascended above the clouds. And without a second thought, leapt into the sky with Yong in tandem. Heartbreakingly, during the descent, Yong attempted to release the parachute, but encountered a failure. Both the main chute and the emergency chute refused to open. They plunged 13,000 feet to their untimely deaths. 
rendering the video where Tyler joked about his survival eerily haunting. Family and friends watched on through tears as a coroner's van removed the bodies of two men who had skydived early this morning. Deputies responded out to the scene and located a tandem jumping pair that uh, did impact the ground without the uh, uh, chute deploy. An investigation into Tyler's death revealed that despite Yong's extensive experience of 700 jumps, he actually lacked the necessary license to perform that tandem jump. Furthermore, he was still in his probationary period and had not yet received proper training. Adding to this tragedy, authorities then discovered a history of around 20 deaths associated with the parachuting center since they opened. Shockingly, despite the tragic deaths of Tyler and Yong, the center's owner, Bill, just chose to keep the facility open and even resumed skydiving operations the very next day. When confronted by the police in this photo, he tried to deflect blame. Witnesses described him as devoid of remorse, compassion, or any meaningful concern for the tragic situation on hand. It's an unfortunate situation, but if you see a car wreck, they don't close the freeway. Uh, it's, uh, it's something that, unfortunately, in this sport, in skiing and scuba diving, uh, there are fatalities. Of course, Tyler's family took Bill, the owner, to court, accusing him of negligent homicide. After a long and expensive court battle, in March of 2021, justice was served as the court found Bill guilty, awarding Tyler's family a compensation of a whopping 40 million US dollars. This victory marked the end of a terrible, terrible chapter. However, Tyler's spirit of adventure, his infectious smile will never be forgotten. He wanted to do so much in this world, but sadly, his life was abruptly cut short due to negligence. Amazingly, the Parachute Center remains open to this very day. On the 20th of May, 2023, a tragic and completely avoidable incident unfolded in El Salvador. That day, it was like any other, it was a sunny, vibrant Saturday when both locals and tourists alike gathered in huge numbers at the renowned Cuscatlan Stadium in the capital city of San Salvador. The stadium is one of the largest stadiums in El Salvador. Its capacity is around 53,000 and this stadium is the home of the Alianza football team. On this particular day, a highly anticipated quarterfinal match of the 2023 Clasurta tournament took place between Alianza and their rival football club, FAS. The excitement was palpable, resulting in sold out tickets and escalating tensions. As the stadium reached its full capacity, the match finally commenced. However, as the game began to start, a dreadful tragedy began to boil. Before the match had even started, approximately 400 to 500 Alianza fans, unable to secure tickets, began gathering near one of the smaller entrances. The minute it started, these fans began to bang and force the lock barriers in an attempt to catch a glimpse of the anticipated match. Around 20 minutes into the game, the compromised barrier finally gave way, causing an avalanche of people to surge onto the pitch. Those who were already inside the stadium, witnessing the sudden influx of people, were gripped by panic. While the safest course of action, in hindsight, would have been to remain in their seats, the chaos fueled a collective desire to escape. Unfortunately, the sheer mass of people made it impossible to do so. The pitch was never designed to accommodate such massive influx of people. Amidst the scream of desperate fans, the situation spiraled out of control. Crushed by the surging crowd, people soon found themselves trapped with no escape routes. All exits were overwhelmed, leaving no room to move whatsoever. Exiting fans soon encountered a sea of people who were also struggling to leave, as well as those trying to get in. The stifling heat and lack of breathable air 
intensified the distress. Disturbing footage captured the pitch's hellish scene, with individuals on the ground totally overheated and in pain, while others desperately fanned them with t-shirts to provide any relief they could. The tragedy rapidly unfolded, prompting the deployment of ambulances and police to assist. However, by that point, the damage had already been done. 12 lives were lost and an additional 500 people were injured and were sent to hospital. Tragically, the majority of the deceased were children and elderly, a truly heart-wrenching outcome. The following day, all national level football matches were suspended and football authorities pledged to hold those responsible accountable. The investigation committee concluded that the security measures and access control at the stadium were grossly insufficient and inadequate. It was a disaster waiting to happen. The Salvadorian Football Federation shifted blame onto the entire Alianza team and its fans. As a result, the Alianza team was fined 30,000 US dollars and their fans were banned from the stadium for one year, forcing Alianza to play their home matches behind closed doors. But what do you think of this? Should the team or the fans have been punished more? Or should some of the individuals have been held responsible, being that they were literally recorded smashing the barricades that ultimately led to 12 people losing their lives? As always, I'm interested in hearing all of your thoughts below, but that is the end of the video. I hope all the people featured here that lost their lives rest in peace. Tyler's eerie video on the runway will definitely stick with me for a long, long time. And the fact that the site is still open, in my opinion, is just ludicrous. The bus falling in the river in Kenya and the video of them dancing beforehand, it just makes you think. Have a dance, crack a smile, because you never truly know when it's your time. But just before I go, if you're into list style horror content like this, be sure to smash that subscribe button below. And while you're down there, you may as well tap that notification bell so that you're alerted when I release content such as this. But other than that, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.